Hey, we've got um, a real treat for you today. We're going to be taking a look at 2015 TRD Pro uh, Forerunner, and we've got Isaac here with me. Thank hey. you How's it going? very much. And Isaac is uh, Lawn Dart Design on Instagram. Your photography is freaking awesome. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I mean it's really cool. So check it out, Lawn Dart Design on Instagram, and we're going to be taking a look at your rig, your Overland Bound member number 833. Yes, I am. Correct. Yes. Um, so I've learned over the last, you know, 48 hours or so and through talking to you that you've got, so one, it's a fantastic build, but you work with a lot of companies and you prototype original designs for Overland gear, don't you? Uh, just a few here and there and then yeah. being able to provide a little bit of um, uh, input on some of the bumpers and rears and mm -hmm. stuff like that and kind of be able to take feedback and put it in an actionable form and give it back to a and yep. see how you can improve the product. All right, hey, let's start uh, at the front and then okay. um, we'll walk around and take a look at this build. Sure. Tell me, like, maybe you can just tell me in general yeah. about your lighting choices. So, um, running uh, Baja Designs lights because uh -huh. um, a lot of Eastern Oregon where we go camping is just wide open desert and being able to throw light really far is really nice. Um, so running uh, a 30 inch S8 bar with little running lights, kind of Raptor style uh, in the grill. And then if I need more punch than that, I've got the big 40 inch uh, on X6 uh, combo. And the yellow on the outside is kind of a, a Baja pre-runner. Just being able to flick those on just gives you a little bit more definition. How do you control your lights? Uh, mine are controlled wirelessly through my worn winch because we kind of ran out of switching space. So they're just a little uh, uh, SAE style plug on the back and uh -huh. turn them on. And it's really neat because you can sit there and freak people out by turning them on wirelessly. Okay, now, great segue. Let's talk about your worn winch. You said you control your lights through your worn winch. Yeah. Now, for me, yeah. I got the old clutch worn yeah. winch, yeah. kind of classic, so I'm unfamiliar sure. with your controller. Sure. How does that work? How does your worn winch work? So, uh, I originally, when I started the rig, I had no idea how heavy it was going to get, so I started with the, and Warren's principle is uh, 1.5 times vehicle weight, so you start at 5,000 pounds, and you double, you know, with 1.5 times, you end up at around 8, and it was fine. Um, the truck has gotten significantly heavier, and a 10K was the right kind of balance, and went from a Xeon uh, 8S, which is the 8,000 pound synthetic, to a 10,000 pound synthetic with their Platinum, which is all wireless, so there is no uh, clutch to actually get into, which is great for hidden winches, or just winches where they just don't have a lot of big cutouts to reach down into. And as a side note, I mean, there is no physical controller anymore. So there, I mean, there's no physical wired controller. So you just plug in the wire or the wireless controller just pairs with it and you can control lights, you can control winching, it can basically release the clutch, you know, you know, give you battery status, heat status. Um, it's, and Warren uh, is uh, a local uh, Oregon brand and I'm, have been a real big fan of their products for a long time and they're just cool. down the road and great warranty and great service. and. To me, they're one of the best winches out there. And their controller has some kind of has a mechanism where you can feed other things into it to control. Yes, there are plugs, uh, 12 volt plugs on the back where you could plug in anything. It takes 12 volt DC, Got it. and it works just fine. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so this is this is this is cool. Yeah, it's uh, was lucky enough that I didn't see I didn't find a solution for this right away, and I found this company up in Vancouver, uh -huh. uh, uh, Vancouver, Canada, and they basically make this product and had to get it kind of imported in. But it's an awesome kind of James Bond like device. <laughs> and they make them for Haas and for Roller Fair Leads, and they're great. Do, but it, do that again. It just uh, it just tucks up, and it's great because you still have the uh, the front license plate. But then surprise, you know, you get a uh, an actual uh, Fair Lead, and it's nice and tucked away. Um, That's great. My second one, I did destroy the first one in Moab just because I, I took a really crappy line and ripped it right off um, but they're cheap enough that they're great and the company is pretty awesome cool all right tell us about this bumper uh, so Pelfrey built um, it's an aluminum bumper which um, would probably not be your first cho first choice for rock crawling but it's great for overlanding where if you have animal strikes it'll protect against that mainly better ground uh, uh, ground clearance and approach mm -hmm. angle um, better access for winch mounting um, it's a good all-around bumper and it only adds, it's like 62 pounds of aluminum, so if weight's a concern, it just keeps it down. It's like half the weight of its steel equivalent. And you've got synthetic line, so synthetic line and a lighter bumper. Yeah, you're, you're... I, I used to have an FJ uh, 
uh, 40 with a uh, um, an actual steel hydraulic winch, and it was just a bear to deal with. And yeah. Steel is it's synthetic's great because it's so easy to respool. It's safe when it breaks and snaps. It's you're not having to worry about getting cut in half. It's it's just a really good setup. Cool, cool. All right, while we're up here, why don't we take a look under the hood? Sure. Can we pop the hood? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the first thing I see is ARB. Yeah, so twin compressor, which is great just because you mm -hmm. can air up a, a 35 from zero to 40 PSI in maybe maybe four to six minutes, which is yeah. great. Uh, it's got the, uh, I think it's the CMK121 solenoid kit. So basically the solenoid runs to my front locker. So I'm E-locker in the back and I'm air locked in the front. Um, and then, and that works out great. I mean, just having air to me is one of the, the best upgrades you can do because yeah. one of the traction is really critical on a trail and having the ability to air up by yourself or air up other people is such a godsend. Um, you know, it's better. Some people like power tanks. Some people love those. I love them. And then, uh, uh, running a big Odyssey group yeah. 31, um, in a Pelfrey cage, um, Pelfrey built, makes a uh, stainless steel cage that just keeps everything locked down because Otherwise, batteries just want to torque around off-road. Um, and then same thing with uh, um, Pelfrey-built uh, fuse plate. So everything's on its own breaker with all the accessories, so it's all clean. Um, because I just had way too much um, running in there, and this just cleans it up. And yeah. it makes accessory additions much, much easier. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just it's isolated. So fridge, solar, lights, all that separate. Tell us the story of your long travel suspension. Yeah, every, I, I, <laughs> people, I, the joke is people are like, oh, you have a long travel? I didn't know. Um, and, and this is not the only 4Runner or Toyota with long travel. There are many other rigs. And the, the great thing is this was built by Walt Wagner in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Walt runs uh, tactical application vehicles. And his specialty is building really heavy rigs that go out into really awesome places and have basically race truck suspension. And we had just kind of reached the point with a normal suspension where it just wasn't hacking it anymore. The ride wasn't good. The, the yeah. stance wasn't good. And then we did, um, at FJ Summit, we pretty much were up on top of Imogene Pass. And we we're just like, let's do long travel. And it started this two and a half, three month build where we um, uh, basically gutted the truck and did uh, plus two long travel from Total Chaos. And it's running Kings with bypasses. And it came down with like the bypasses were maybe a little unnecessary, but you know, we were just like, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And <laughs> you know, people are like, is it like a race truck suspension? It's, it is a race truck suspension and Total Chaos makes really, really great components. And you know, it's a different driving experience, but it's just butter off road. Yeah. And this truck's heavy and it really handles that weight well. What's your weight, you know? About I think I'm about 6,500 pounds on the truck, yeah. which is shocking knowing that it started about 4,800 pounds. So pretty much adding about a ton to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sliders. Uh, Pelfrey built sliders. Yep. Um, steel, great. Um, love them. They have the kick out, which is great. Um, uh, they've done some repainting on them because I did drag them through Moab a couple times. I've got some nice scrapes and dents right about here on mine. They the, don't have a kick out. The kick out's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, they're just fantastic. Um, and they're all bolt on, which is fantastic. At some point mm -hmm. I'll weld them on for a little bit more strength, but they've been, they've been great for the mm -hmm. times I've used them. The, uh, so inside kind of the Star Trek command console in here, <laughs> um, Basically uh, running a ham radio, so it's a Yaesu FTM 400, the touchscreen one, and then an iPad Air that I literally had just sitting around that has been kind of turned into trail navs. Um, and then what's linking it up, if you kind of go up, pan up a little bit more, you'll see the, uh, the DeLorme inReach, which is a satellite modem, essentially. It's a communicator, and it just gives me the ability to send text messages. It's a transceiver, essentially. I can receive GPS and send out satellite messages. Um, I always, I have medical, I have always keep first aid kits tucked into the doors, uh, um, uh, just, just wherever I yeah. can. Just because one of the things that to me always gets ignored is like fire suppression and medical and all that stuff because if you're not going to get into an accident, you will find someone else there. And it's it's one of those things where it's a low priority behind lights and tires and stuff. And it's surprising enough that a lot of people just don't even have fire extinguisher. All right. And I see you've got your uh, your ARB 
awning? Yes. Is awesome. it? Does it swing out or is it pull straight it out? It just pulls straight out. Just pulls straight out. All right. Cool, cool. Okay, um, let's go around the other side and we'll take a look at your bumper. Sure. All right. So uh, it's CBI, which is uh, made in uh, Idaho. Um, they make a great bumper. Uh, this is the dual swing arm one, which I knew that I needed because I was going to run 35s in the truck. And it just also lets you open up to this wonderful trailer mm -hmm. without having to unlink um, and get vertical, like actual clearance for it, which also I live in an urban setting in Portland. And um, having, it's basis at a premium to actually work this. Right. Um, but it's great just because So dual uh, dual swing arm. Um, they have a uh, table built in, which is nice because great. it will fit a uh, like just a normal 18 inch stove, mm -hmm. which is great to work on or make coffee on or flat space is at a premium. Work on a camera, whatever <laughs> you name it. Um, uh, but it holds. And we did a couple things different. We did a uh, double hitch, so it's actually got a hitch off the uh, swing arm, which if you want to just mount a uh, bike, so you could actually tow and haul a bike. There you go. Great. Um, camp light in the back, uh, general mounting positions for uh, high lift jack, shovel, communication mast, all that fun stuff. Um, great bumper. Been yeah. really, really happy with it. had this since August. I had a single swing arm before, and I, I swear by the duels. They're just fantastic. And what do you think uh, these uh, <laughs> toe points? Are um, they are they rated? Are they pretty good? Oh, they're Is great. It tied I, into the I, I had frame? A, I had a series 80 pull me out of a deep snow bank. We were just snow wheeling and just pulled me with a kinetic strap and just came right out. They're they're not going anywhere. I mean, they're go. It's like tied in four or five places inside the uh, inside the frame. It's mm -hmm. just not it's not budging. It's you could probably hang the truck by it. It's just fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Can we take a quick look on the on yes. the inside? Yeah. All right. There's a dog in here. Long. Hello, um, Posey. Hey. Um, <laughs> smile for camera. Um, Goose Gear Cargo System. Um, worked with them to figure out kind of the lowest profile but usable amount of space. Yep. Um, and uh, we're going to add some Trek Pack and organize it just a little bit more so that my OCD is pleased. <laughs> because this, this is a is pink style. Uh, this is an S show. I know. You got to clean this I up. I know. What a mess. Um, General tools, torque wrench, uh, 150 or 230 piece set. Just you know, general recovery gear, stuff to mash on the truck if I if something comes loose. Um, you know, ARB tire puncture kit, uh, torque wrench, high lift tool, um, hitch link, all that fun stuff. Stuff to air up and air down. So, you know, normally uh, when she's not riding in there, uh, recovery bag sits right up on top of that uh, goose gear platform. Uh, ARB fridge in yeah. a drop slider. This Can we take good. a look at that drop slider? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we should take a look at the drop slider. This is a Tembo Tusk drop slider? Yes, it is. Jerry at Tembo Tusk builds it, and it is basically like clockwork. Jerry builds just excellent stuff, and uh, I think this is basically one of the last few that he will actually be doing. He has threatened for quite a while to stop making these just because they are quite time intensive. Yes. That is awesome. <laughs> Cool. So, food is great. Gee, you're so healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Buried underneath is quite a bit of Red Bull. So. <laughs> uh, well, that's great. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's even got a uh, cutting board that slides out. We're, you know, robots in disguise. This is for all transformers. It's fantastic. Um, but it's great is that you don't have to be crawling up inside or stepping on the bumper to get inside of it. It just makes it a little bit easier for yeah. camp. Um, and it's it's just really great. You know, we didn't know. It make, yeah, it makes it accessible, pulls right out. I mean, it's yeah, and there's some other options out there. Like Alucab makes us like a tipping one too. It's mm -hmm. just, it makes it better. It's just, a, you know, anytime you can make it the camp a little bit more convenient, it's just fantastic. Um, but Jerry is uh, just a madman. He just builds some great stuff, and this is one of my favorite things he's ever built, and I uh, was lucky enough to get one on there. And then the great thing is that you don't, it's not feats of strength to get it back in the truck. 
that is a that is a piece of engineering work right there. Yeah, he's. I mean, that's that's really good. And he's very humble about about what he's built. It's really a great setup. Cool. All right, is it about time to take a look at this trailer? Yeah. This adventure trailer? Yeah. Right on. Let's take a look at that. All right, so Isaac, tell us about, this is a prototype trailer, right? I mean, let's it's, tell us about it. It's very close to final. We've got a little bit of feedback to incorporate and probably the next month and a half, get it all dialed. But this is the uh, Shut X Venture and Shut builds all the trailers for the US, mil or at least the majority for the US military, if you've seen them, like Humvees and Deuce and a Half pulling stuff. Those are the trailers. Um, so they've got a military pedigree, and this is kind of one way is you know, just one of the many ways to skin a cat in terms of off-road trailers. Mm -hmm. is it's all aluminum, so it's fairly light for what it is. It's all huck bolt, no welds, no rivets to break. It is a, uh, it's the brand new X-Venture 3, which uh, X-Overland got to take up the McKenzie Trail, and this is the more mature version of it. This is serial number one, and it's been uh, great just towing it down to California. It tows fantastic. The thing I noticed right away is it is. I mean, that's beefy, right? Yeah. I mean, could you stand on that? If yes. You, okay. Yes. And I'm. Yeah. I'm not that's a light. Awesome. I'm not a light guy by any any measure, but it's you can stand on it, no problem. This is a Truxedo um, tonneau cover. It is rad. You'd have to go at it with a, like an angle grinder to get into it. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to surreptitiously get in. Um, and unlike a segmented one, like the folding style, it's not a bear to try to open it up. Um, mm -hmm. In fact. Uh, the whole thing is really, really simple to get into. Uh, just two little pull springs. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, just, it just opens up. It's great. Um, so it makes getting in, in and out of it really, really convenient on the road or at camp. I mean, this whole thing will set up in about five minutes, the whole, the whole rig. What about the suspension? Uh, so they're using um, they're using a torsion axle, mm -hmm. um, so um, which is really nice. We're running uh, electronic trailer brakes, so the thing tows really well, stops really really well. We're we matched it on 35s, so it's a pretty beefy trailer with spacers just to get the same track width. Um, it it is the torsion axle is great because you know it once it's underweight, it just it just rides, it just floats. It's really fantastic. And then up top? Uh, so a um, fox wing, uh, basically an eight foot that goes around the side, or it's actually a Oh, seven. is it a 270? Yeah. Awesome. Is. Yeah. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, so it's it's really nice. What are they, like 50 bucks? No, <laughs> no, but they're, but they're, you can't really, you can't really run a fox wing on a, on a, on a forerunner because of the tailgate that goes up. Um, on an FJ Cruiser where the door goes open, it's a really great solution. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's just at head height, you know, uh, eventually my move to the, the Alu Cab Shadow, which integrates to this. Mm -hmm. But it just gives you just a little bit more space to work with, especially great. in the rain with a gutter that comes out. Um, and then we did the, uh, the Alu Cab tent, and this thing is just rad. Let's um, pop that thing open. That was easy. Yeah, it, it pretty much less than 10 seconds and then just climb over it and open up the kind of the entryway and deploy the ladder and there you got a tent. And I mean, the great thing about it is that it, it closes up pretty much as fast as you can put weight on it. So it's it's uh, kind of skirts around some of the issues of a conventional rooftop tent, you know. That that was, that's fantastic. That's great. So, it was like Tarzan. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fun. It's very fun. All right. All right, let's take a look at your power block, and then after we do that, you got to tell me the story about this tire, jack wheel. Yeah, yeah. Let's. <laughs> so um, one of the things we're working on is maybe a larger tongue box just down the road. Um, but the way that Shut builds it is you have Group Thirty Five military grade switching on the inside for fuels panel. It'll do uh, normal AC in from a wall. It'll do solar. It has an inverter in it. It is thousand um, watt inverter. Thousand watt inverter. The tent also has its own inverter in the inside. Lights all around. Rock lights, bed lights, um, water pump. I am a huge fan of these switches. The switchology Those are, is awesome. They're protected. They're that is 
really cool. And they're lit too, yeah. right? Yeah, the tips uh, light up so you know if it's on or off. Yep. It's not, hmm, I wonder if it's on. That's great. Um, and the, the trailer has an internal 18 gallon water tank. So you just okay. plug in a water heater and it just automatically just starts dispensing warm water so that you can take a shower in the middle of nowhere and it is awesome. Um, yeah, the, this is the, uh, this is, yeah, this is a significant uh, uh, wheel, uh, kind of front kind of jack wheel. And uh, we were lucky enough that Shut had some really cool stuff from Australia. And these are really common there, but you don't see them. And um, they're really easy to work with. They stow, they don't move around uh, off road. They don't sit there flopping around. And then we literally had this wheel sitting in the shop that the owner, John Bender, was like, I've got this wheel, it's eight by four inches and I don't know what to do with it, let's throw it on there. And it's just the most ridiculously beefy jack wheel in existence and we're just like, we gotta throw it on there. So if you forget to, to close your jack wheel, it's okay because it'll just, you have it'll, an off-road it'll run tire, on that. It's just fine. a scale version of right. my like, little minnows. It's it's great, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's just it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and we're, we're like, we gotta throw that on there. That'd be super awesome. Okay, that's cool, that is cool. Um, what is the, the the swivel capability of your hitch? Yeah, so the uh, the the coupler is great because it'll. I mean, technically, it'll do. I mean, just 360 degrees. Not that you need it, but it just takes away the limitations of a ball hitch, where normally if you're hitting weird angle and it's not going to impact the vehicle. So it just opens up. Uh, that coupler is great, and it just comes right off. It's a lot easier to work with in the field with one person. A um, lot of mobility, a lot of freedom. Um, really, really great setup. Great. Shut uses that as their main setup, um, and I couldn't be happier with it. It, it you can't even feel it. Hey, uh, what else should we know about your rig? Anything else, real quick? Um, it's it's like I said, it was it was built to kind of haul camera gear into some weird places, and it's you yeah. know the, the great thing about the trailer is to load it with camera gear and go mm -hmm. out and go on camera gigs or editing by, or whatnot. By trade, you're a videographer, DP, uh, editor. Editor, motion graphics artist, camera yep. operator, AC. Um, so I get to be in charge of some really expensive camera gear. I get trusted <laughs> with that. And the trailer helps me um, take it in some yep. really great places. And cool. uh, the truck is like, the truck started out with, I think the joke at the shop uh, that has helped me with this a lot is um, that we're just going to put a roof rack and some light bar and some sliders on, and then we ended up with something that has just gone absolutely out of control. But it's been a really fun build, and it's, yep. um, you know, like I said, I'm a tinkerer, and it's, it's, you know, just, there's very little TRD Pro left on this thing. It's a shift knob and some badges, you know. Yeah. Nose extension's all gone, interiors, deleting seats. I mean, I'm, I'm heading down to Goose Gear to put a seat delete and a second bigger battery in there. So, I, the amount of people that can fit in it are going out, the amount of gear that can fit in it is going out. So it's, yep. been, it's been a really fun day. Well, cool. You've been to some amazing places. It's been fun talking to you. I need to get some trail suggestions from you. We got to get you up to Oregon. Yeah. Um, this year has been a little slow on travel, but definitely heading down to Overland Expo, and then we're doing uh, Northwest Overland Rally, and then Baja, and then FJ Summit, and maybe a few other places in Idaho in August. But it's been it's been a great rig just because even when you're not driving it, it just kind of sits there in the garage and it's like driving me. Places. So awesome. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks, you Mike. very much yeah, for sharing. Yeah, it's been fantastic.